upcoming comp year contract 2020 to 2025. Some short introductions. My name is Reese Peterson. I'm the account manager for the state of Wyoming. We're also going to have Devin Peterson, our Northeast Regional Manager, uh, doing the live demonstration on the Canon equipment today. Some information about our contacts, important contacts for the state of Wyoming. For ordering and order support, you'll be contacting me, Reese Peterson. You can contact me at 800 442 0981 or email at wycontract at officeshopping.com. For invoice and billing support, you'll be contacting Kelly Hammond, 800-442-0981. You can also email her at kellyh at officeshopping.com. For service and support, you can call 855-333-0100 or email dispatch at officeshopping.com. And that information will be on our service support stickers on every machine that we install. Information about our service centers and coverage. Our Wyoming service centers are Cowley, Wyoming, which is our corporate headquarters, Riverton, Casper, Sheridan, Cheyenne, Green River. Our South Dakota service center is in Rapid City, South Dakota. Our average service response time in Wyoming currently is 3.75 hours and that's border to border in Wyoming. We have an 85% first call fix rate, which means 85% of the time when we are called, we're fixing it the first time with the correct part. Talking a little bit about Canon, uh, they did win the line of the year for the year 2020, and they have won that four out of the last five years, 2018, 2017, 2016, and then 2020. Uh, they won that award for reliability, ease of use, feature set, image quality, serviceability, security, and software. They only had three misfeeds in two million prints on, the can on Canon's current copiers and MFPs. Uh, that is a jam rate of one jam per 705,000 pages. We will also be doing a live question and answer session, and these questions will be submitted through our chat function on YouTube. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit those. We're going to have um, people answering those. Jacob May, he's a regional manager for Northwest Wyoming. He'll be answering those questions in the chat section, as well as we'll be answering some live at the end of the show. I'm going to exit the PowerPoint now, and I'm going to show you how to access the Canon pricing catalog for the state of Wyoming. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to type in officeshopinc.com slash wicontract. The Canon product catalog is right here. All of the catalog pages are formatted the same way and we'll get to that as soon as it loads here. taking a while for it to load. <clears throat> so anyway, our first, our first pages on the catalog, they're going to be the title page, terms and conditions of the contract, and then we'll dive right into our black and white series for Canon. So here's the title page. Here are the terms and conditions for the catalog. And then we go into our black and white devices, starting with our A4 devices from Canon. So these are going to be the devices that will fit great on desktops. They are limited though to being able to do 8.5 by 14 size paper or legal size paper. All of our catalog pages are formatted the same way. So you'll see this print up to right here 8.5 by 14 legal size paper. And then down here you'll see the Wyoming state lease price, the Wyoming cost per copy, and then the accessories will be on the following page. So we'll scroll down and you can see these accessories here for this particular series. These are the Wyoming state lease prices here. Then we move from our A4 devices into our A3 devices going from low volume up to mid volume. The 4700 series and going to our high volume 6700 series and 8700 series. And each one of these pages are formatted the same way. 
and you can see that this one is adjustable up to 13 by 19. You have your Wyoming lease price here and your Wyoming cost per copy here. The following page has the accessories, Wyoming lease price, and then we move into our full color devices. Starting with our A4 models, again limited to this legal size paper, 8.5 by 14. But the, con the catalog pages are formatted the same way, having the Wyoming lease price located here, and then having the CPC located here. You'll notice that we added black and white, and our color charge here. Accessories on the following page. We'll move through these A4 devices into our A3 devices low volume to high volume again, 3725 and the 3730, into our 5700 series, and then into our high volume color, the 7700 series. Again, lease price located here, Wyoming cost per copy located here with black and white in color. Followed by the accessories for that machine. And then the last page of the catalog shows our service center locations. Cowley, Riverton, Casper, Green River, Sheridan, Rapid City, South Dakota, and Cheyenne. There's also some contact information here. Here's my information as the account manager, phone number, cell phone number, email, and then this contact email here. Invoice and billing located here. And then we do have additional contacts located on the back page uh, just to help us with the uh, with response time. All right, we're going to move into the order form now. It's located next to the product catalog. When you click on the order form, it's going to start the download here of the order form. Once that downloads, it's going to open up Microsoft Excel. You'll have to click Enable Editing. And once that form is open, you might have to mess with the zoom a little bit just to make sure that whole entire form displays here. So we added the ship to location and the bill to location. Both of these need to be filled out. This will ensure proper delivery. And then this will ensure that the invoice goes to the proper place. We also can email those invoices. So first what you want to do is you want to select your uh, model here. I'm going to go ahead and select the 525 IF. And you can see that it auto-populates the price of that machine based on the catalog and, and uh, contract. Also auto-populates the cost per page. And it also allows me to select the accessories specifically for that machine. So I'm just going to click through and I'm going to add a few accessories here so you can see what that looks like. And it does total that for me. We will need the authorized leasing entity signature and then the agency signature here requisition number, and then the rest of this form filled out here. And if you have any questions about that, you can feel free to email us at wicontract at officeshopping.com. We're going to move into the live demonstration now, um, and we'll move into that live demonstration. We are going to show a short video just about Canon and some of the new improvements of the, the Canon DX series. Canon's award-winning Image Runner Advanced line is getting a refresh. Introducing the Image Runner Advanced DX series. Easy to use, advanced scanning functionality, and a robust security feature set designed to support organizations through their digital transformation journey. Image Runner Advanced products have a reputation as technology that's easy to learn and simple to use, and the new Image Runner Advanced DX models are no exception. The user interface features a full touch screen with soft number keys, similar to a smartphone or tablet, while staying true to the core usability from previous models for easy adoption and smooth transition. A modern, sleek design allows users to easily retrieve their prints, and the new feeder provides a flat workspace to place and organize documents. Along with a new design, the Image Runner Advanced DX models also introduce a new workflow feature, Hot Folders. Drag and drop a file into the hot folder, and it will automatically print with predefined settings, such as number of copies and finishing requirements. 
Scanning enhancements on the ImageRunner Advanced DX series support organizations as they transform analog documents into digital data. These models are designed with productivity in mind. The new automatic document feeder offers market-leading scan speeds of up to 270 images per minute across A3 models. This impressive scan speed is as much as 69% faster than previous models. Not only is scanning fast, but it's also quiet. The new feeder has up to 30% noise reduction compared to previous generations, making these models a great fit for today's workplace. Scanning that's fast, quiet, and also smart. The ImageRunner Advanced DX models now include digital skew correction to automatically adjust the image for accurate, high-quality scans. The document feeder supports a wider range of media sizes for various applications that can include things like receipts, checks, and even business cards on some models. Security is a core focus when Canon develops technology and solutions. The standard security feature set of the ImageRunner Advanced product line continues to evolve along with customer needs. For example, ImageRunner Advanced DX models are among the first in the industry to offer support for the TLS 1.3 encryption protocol. ImageRunner Advanced DX models also support FTPS, an encrypted version of FTP, for sending data utilizing TLS. Like the previous models, the ImageRunner Advanced DX models will incorporate McAfee Embedded Control technology, which, once turned on, utilizes a whitelist to protect against malware and tampering of firmware and applications. The Canon ImageRunner Advanced DX series, supporting organizations through their digital transformation journey with technology that is easy to use, offers advanced scanning functionality and includes a robust security feature set. To learn more about the ImageRunner Advanced DX series, visit usa.canon.com slash simplyadvanced. All right, well, welcome to the live product demonstration for Canon. Uh, I'm excited to show you the product today, show you a little bit about some of the different features. Uh, but before we get started, I want to make sure that everybody's aware and, you know, we, we do have a live question and answer. We have Jacob May. He's over there uh, helping us out, running the keyboard, uh, getting all your questions up and down so we can answer questions. So please, as they come in, as you just think, just go ahead and write the questions down or put them in the chat and we'll get them answered at the end of the session. Um, so anyway, uh, what we want to do is go ahead and get started. We're going to show you the device, obviously, but then we're going to show you some of the different features that are available that you can get uh, with your Canon product. So, what you see here is Canon's Image Runner Advanced. It's the brand new uh, Canon Image Runner Advanced DX series, and it's the this one right here is a 50 page per minute color device, and it has the ability to print at 50 pages per minute. Has the ability to run uh, up to 12 by 18 size paper. You can run oh gosh, I don't know, even all, tons of different paper stocks, paper medias. Uh, you can run your cover, you can run all sorts of stuff. You can even run textured paper if you need to. It gives you a better quality, better color quality because of its, um, what they call the transfer belt, because of its toner, its uh, new and improved toner as well. So it does give you better color quality uh, than what you could previously have seen uh, before out of Canon. So what we want to do is we want to start and, gosh, you know, it's always difficult to start because there's always all these different cool options and all these different features that are available. So the first thing that you're going to see is this document feeder. This is brand new with the DX series device. It's a new digital device, new digital, digital scanning. As you saw in the little video there, it is the fastest in its class. It scans at 250 images per minute. It has the ability to do both sides of the document scan both sides of the document at the same time. One thing that is neat about it, and it's digital, right, as I mentioned before, so it does have the ability to do um, auto gradation on the fly. So previously before, you know, you might have had another device when you're making copies and you're doing these different things and it, and it slows down and it has to reread. This device will actually read that all and be able to do it on the go. So it, again, it helps increase its speed um, as well as its output quality. One of the features that it now includes is the ability to de-skew images, or de-skew and then also remove shadowing. So a lot of times you'll see, you probably have them in your office, documents that have been copied and sent and then copied and sent. The only time that we send something through, it'll put that little shadow along the letter, shadow along, 
this device actually has the ability to start blocking those out and try to eliminate those as it comes through the document feeder. So it's one of its great advantages. And the other thing is it has the ability to scan almost anything. I think we get the request all the time, well, can I just put a stack of checks in the document feeder? Can I put some receipts in there? Can I do this and just have a stack? Well, with this new document feeder on the DX series, can offers, you do have the ability to do that. As you know, as you can, all you have to do is adjust the guides to fit along the size of paper, and it will uh, bring those into its uh, scanning registration. So a couple things we do want to show you about the product inside is we did mention that it scans both sides of the document at the same time. So in order to do that, and you've probably had this call before from every vendor um, has this call. When somebody calls in and they say, oh, I've got streaks when I make copies. They say, oh, the first thing they always say to do is, well, clean the slate glass, right? Did you clean the slate glass? And you go, well, yeah, I did. And, and you know, and it usually resolves the problem when making copies. So one thing we always want to do is point out that slit glass, and that's right here. So if your streak is on the front side of the copy as it comes through, this is with the glass that you need to clean. So we just take this little soft cloth that Canon puts right here, okay, grab it, go ahead, and wipe that glass down. Sometimes, depending on what it is, it does take maybe just a little bit of elbow grease to get in there and get it out, get it off, you know, uh, especially if it's like white out or I'm pretty notorious for those gel pens. You know, those will get on there and you really just kind of have to rub them down. Uh, we don't recommend using, if you can, get, stay away from using like uh, rubbing alcohol or those cleaning wipes or those things, uh, just because there is a nice little coat on there to actually help um, keep it cleaner, okay? Helps keeps the dust off and those things. But if there is something stuck on there pretty good, uh, rubbing alcohol is probably your best bet. If your streak is on the back side of the glass or on the back side of your copy when doing double-sided, you will need to access that. And there's a little blue lever right here and it just actually pops down like so. And then you'll see a blue latch right here. We grab that blue latch, pop this open, and then right inside, as soon as this door's open, right inside you will see your glass that you need to wipe down. Take that same cloth, go ahead and just wipe it, and you're good to go, okay? And close up the doors, and you should be all right. One thing I do want to mention about the document feeder, and this is one thing that we, we talk about, and we'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more when we start talking about our service and, and what we, we hope for, is if you start scanning documents and you get the ability and they're slipping or it's jamming and all those different things, call us because we'd love to come out and just kind of clean the rollers up. If they need to be replaced, we replace them. With this document feeder, Canon has increased the capacity and increased the ability for their, uh, these little rollers right here to run longer and last longer. So that's another increased um, advancement that they made with their document feeder. Okay, so we're gonna close that down. The next feature that we wanna talk about is we wanna go in and we're gonna talk about our, our finishing capabilities. What you see here and configured on this 57, uh, 5750 device is the external finisher with booklet finishing capabilities. This device does have the ability to stack up to 4,000 sheets of paper, has ability to staple, and if you would like and you need the availability to hole punch, it's right here. And you can add that as an additional accessory. Um, you'll find it in your pricer as well. It is a two, three hole puncher. But it is right inside there. We'll close that door up. As I mentioned, this device does have the ability to do booklet finishing, so it has the ability to staple, fold, and saddle stitch booklets for you. So if you're doing any catalogs or brochures for uh, any type of um, you know, presentation or anything like that, this is a great option. And as I mentioned, Canon does a great job with the media that it offers and its color quality. So you can do, we run our glossy stuff through it, specifically for the brochures and things that we produce, it is run on this exact device with the bullet finisher. Okay, that's the option that this is configured with, but we have a couple other different solutions, different options. If we want to and we don't need the booklet finishing, you can get this finisher without the booklet. It is available. They do have a convenient stapler as well. We will point that out. We did get a couple questions about that um, and we get that frequently. Well, if I remove the staple out of my job and I'm making copies and I got to find or look around for the stapler, well, you can find that and you can just insert your documents right in here and go ahead and hit the button once it turns green and it will staple your documents back, your originals back for you. 
Okay? It does also have an internal finisher as well. If we're looking at us needing a smaller footprint that can stack up to 500 sheets of paper, it can still have a hole punch if you need it. And one of the great advantages of it too, if it's one of those things that you need, it does also offer a convenient stapler. So you can just go ahead and put them in here. So I always recommend the internal finisher if we're talking about running shorter jobs, maybe it's not as busy if it's a smaller department, but we still want our finishing. That's a great option for us to look at because you're still gonna have all that stuff for you and you still get it all done. Um, remember the only difference is, is it's stacking capability and that's really about it for that. Um, let's go ahead and let's jump on to paper capacity. I think that's an important topic in, uh, as you can make accessories. Changes to that feature. So the device here is going to come standard with these first two drawers. This is standard on every device. Okay, you'll have these two drawers. Inside of this first drawer right here, this drawer with Canon can only be configured to do eight and a half by 11 or smaller. So this drawer can be set up to run envelopes, it can be set up to run labels, it can be set up to run your statement paper, um, checks, all sorts of different things that it can be done inside of this drawer. It holds up to 550 sheets of paper. So you can go ahead and just fill it up to the line. You can see right here, if you do decide to run your envelopes through, it does have an envelope fill line just because it does take a little more space to um, grab onto those envelopes, okay? So we'll go ahead, that's the first drawer. Your second drawer that your device is gonna come with has the ability to do up to 11 by, or 12 by 18 size paper. And it's extremely easy to change the paper type in this drawer. All you have to do is actually just grab these two uh, tabs right there, move them into the separate different positions, put your new paper in, and go ahead and close that up. Now the device will automatically recognize what size of paper is in the device once the drawer is closed. Again, you still have your fill level of 550 sheets. Okay, you can also still run envelopes through this drawer. Okay, so we go ahead and we close that drawer and we're good to go. The piece that you can customize that we do want to point out is this bottom portion. This device is configured with the cassette feed unit AM1. It has two drawers that are exactly the same. They both hold 550 sheets of paper, can both do up to 12 by 18 size paper. And again, you do have your fill level right here to show you. The paper changing configuration, changing the paper sizes is 100% the same. All you need to do is just move the guides to whatever position it needs to be in and close the door and we're good to go. I do love the soft close feature, by the way, of these drawers. It is pretty handy. So the next feature that we can add and customize right here is this section can be a um, high capacity feed unit. So if you're running a lot of letter documents or even legal, it can be adjusted to do legal, is you can um, stack that up. It'll hold side by side, it'll do 1500 and 1500 sheets of paper in each one. So you're looking at three reams a piece inside of there. And it's just gonna be one, looks like a one big drawer that pulls out and you just side stack the paper inside of there. And it's pretty easy uh, to go ahead and change. The other thing, the other option that you can do, if, like I said, if you're in a smaller department, there's less users, you're not changing paper near as often, you can go ahead and you can look at doing the cabinet feature, which would just turn this into a cabinet where you can store mm, extra reams of paper, you can store extra toners, uh, whatever you might want to be able to fit underneath there to store that you'll use with your device if you need it. Okay, all right, let's move on to the bypass because we do get this question quite a bit. And this is something that I do believe Canon does very, very well, is the bypass unit. They've made some enhancements and some improvements to it. It's what they call a smart bypass. And honestly, it's pretty smart, smarter than I am. <laughs> you go ahead and as soon as you put the paper in, it will automatically recognize what size of paper you have. So there's no more configuring about, oh, well, it's letter, it's this and this. All you'll need to do on the, in the screen is actually just go ahead and tell it, yep, it is letter, that's correct, and tell it the exact paper weight. Because a lot of times what we do with our bypass tray is we're running our labels, we're running our heavier media, we're running, um, uh, you can run banner paper through it. 
uh, you know, all those unfamiliar medias that we don't necessarily put in the drawer, we can run through here. And the best part is, like I mentioned, it is a smart bypass tray. So as soon as I put that document, those documents in, the device will not print to that unless you select it. So there's no more running down the hallway, you know, when I put my letterhead in or I put my checks in. Uh, there's no need to run down to the, my office to print before somebody else does. The device will only pull from there if you tell it to, which is very handy to do. Okay? So we'll go ahead and we will talk about the toner. As I mentioned before, Canon is always trying to improve their color quality. It's one of the things that I believe that they do the very best is their color quality. And so inside of here, to get to the toner, we are literally just gonna be opening up this door right here. And right here, you'll see we have our toner cartridges. Canon has been doing this for a very long time. So for those of you maybe have experienced Canon previously, they do not allow you to get into the toner drawers, okay? And there's a very specific reason for that. They're a very green company and they wanna make sure that you don't replace the toner before you have to. So we open that up, you can't get into there. Once the toner is empty, you'll be notified on the screen. You'll open this cabinet door right here and the door will actually fall open. It, not all of them will open, but only the one that needs to be replaced, which helps aid the end user in changing the right toner, making sure that they get the right one in the right slot. So all you'll do is stick the new toner in, go ahead, close this door, and your device is ready to go and it's fully operational, fully functional again. One thing that we do get asked with that, since, well, since uh, I can't get into the toner, uh, how am I gonna get my toner? How am I always gonna make sure that we have toner? Well, the Office Shop Incorporated uses Canon's software called the Imageware Remote that allows us to monitor the overall health of your device. So we actually get to see the toner levels, the live toner levels. We get to see everything from uh, toner, jams, error codes, uh, all those different errors and things uh, that can happen to your device, the overall health. So as Reese mentioned previously about our you know, 85% fixed call, call rate. The reason why that is, is because of Imageware Remote and the ability that my guys have, our guys, our service technicians have, to be able to pull up their device, look at the application, the Imageware Remote application, and see exactly the parts that they need to bring to come and fix your device before it happens, or before um, they leave the shop. The other thing is that we monitor as well, and the reason why this drawer here can only do up to eight and a half by uh, 11 is because your waste toner. They improved the waste toner capacity. So almost everybody who deals with copiers has experienced waste toner. This is their device, their waste toner. This is the big honker that catches all the stuff that falls off. We actually monitor this as well. So as soon as this guy starts getting full, our, um, our warehouse department will actually ship you a brand new one. Once it arrives, go ahead, take this one out and just throw it in the trash can. Take the new one, stick it right here, and it just slides right back in, close the door, and you're good to go. One thing that is very nice that we do, and we get a lot of people will say, well, we'll get phone calls and they'll say, well, I, I got these toners, and I got these waste toners, and I don't need them. Well, it's because we monitor it and we see it before you do. so. That's why you're getting it, because you're going to need it sooner than later. Okay? All right. Well, let's go ahead and, like I mentioned, if there's any questions on configuration, any questions on the device product itself, uh, go ahead. Let's put those in the questions. Let's go ahead and let's uh, um, ask, those, uh, ask the questions and then configurations and those kinds of things. Okay? Uh, we'll start talking about the panel up here and the actual operation. I love the way that Canon works. Uh, I, to me, I think it's very user friendly, very operational friendly. Uh, and so really what we do here, uh, hopefully you, you guys can see everything, right? So what we're gonna do is we'll just walk through. So the, here is our copy feature to the left. We'll go ahead and hit copy. And you'll first notice, the first thing you're gonna notice when you come into the device is that there is no hard keys anymore. Everything is soft keys. So what you're looking at here, as soon as I hit copy, you'll see my keys on the right hand side automatically pop up. And we're going to be looking at um, everything is defaulted to black and white. Like I mentioned, this is a color device. We set everything default to black and white because we want to save money. We want to make you guys have to have the decision to make the color copy. So we go ahead 
and we select, if we want color, we select color, go ahead and hit auto or full color, hit okay. And now we're gonna be doing a color device, a color job. If I wanna go ahead and I wanna get into my finishing features and access collate offset, we always, we default everything to be offset. Um, staple and collate, so if I wanna go ahead and staple, I'll hit next. And then you can put your staple in any corner that you want to be in. You can do it in double. You can even saddle stitch if you want to. Or Canon offers this piece right here. It's called staple free. You can actually have the device crimp or staple. Uh, what it does actually puts a crimp in, in the corners, which this is great for documents that you know if you're gonna be tearing in half or you're gonna be pulling apart, but we need to separate them out for handouts, for contracts, those kinds of things. This is a great little feature that it does have. One thing that I do want to point out and note before we start talking about the other features and options inside of here is staple finishing. Uh, anytime that there's a highlighted button right here, it'll be yellow. So we do get a question a lot about this two-sided. Well, I don't want two-sided, but it says it's going to do it. It will not do two-sided unless the yellow button is turned on. Now we're set up to do two-sided documents. This screen will automatically reset every 90 seconds to its uh, default settings. So you don't have to worry about using somebody else's settings. That timer setting is, one, is adjustable. We can set it to be whatever you want, um, but that's kind of what we found to be the kind of the sweet point there. So inside of options, we do have a bunch of new features. Uh, you know, you do have your standards, your booklet, your job building, uh, your combining images. You can add covers, you can insert sheets, you can do different sized originals. On page two, you can do page numbering. You can watermark. You can uh, print the date on the copies if you want to date something of when you made the copy. You can also do a secure watermark, which is kind of a neat feature because if we make a copy or if we make a print and we select this secure watermark, it actually inlays a, a faint image in the back. So if somebody takes it to any other device and they try to scan it or they try to make a copy of it, it will actually black out the page. So it's really handy for increased security, uh, which is something that Canon is very, very big on, is their security. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, on page four down here, one of my favorite things that they do offer is skip blank pages. So if you have a you know, two-sided and single-sided documents, if I go in and I hit the skip blank pages, I can actually say, oh, I want it to be any color, white colors only, or I can even come in and adjust my intensity of what it's searching for. Because, you know, if we're doing two-sided documents, I don't need the copy of the white side or the blank side of the paper. Uh, you can also do um, detect feeder, so it'll detect multi-feeds, which we just spoke on the phone with somebody who had that issue, and they just asked, well, sometimes it'll pull two or three documents to the document feeder. Well, the good news is, with this device, it will automatically detect that it pulled two sheets of the document through, and it will automatically alert you and um, notify you that you need to make some adjustments to that device, okay, to that job. So that's copying. Uh, it's pretty basic. It's as simple as, uh, as usual. It's just a matter of finding the settings and finding the jobs that you want to do. So once we're inside of here, if we want to ever go back, we just come up in here and you'll see the little home button right there, the house. We go ahead and we hit that button and it takes us right back to the home screen where everything begins. So then the next feature we want to discuss right now is the scan and send feature. Inside of here, you'll see this is just kind of the base features right here. You'll see an address book. Inside of here, you'll see a, a list of addresses that we do have inside of the book. You can send to anything, anybody that's inside of there, you can send at one time. And the reason why is because it's um, using the same process to send documents. So over here on the right hand side, you'll see your different settings that are available to you. Everything is going to set default to do color. Everything is set default to do PDF compact and auto size. That auto size feature is very handy because if you have a stack of letter, you have a stack of legal and they're all intertwined and you don't want to be the one that has to go through and do that, the device will automatically do that for you. Okay. One thing we do love about Canon is the PDFs or the different file types that we have the ability to send in. It comes standard with PDF, JPEG, TIFF, XPS, and this OXML right here 
It gives you the option to send stuff in Microsoft Word or even PowerPoint documents, okay? Pretty neat little feature. In PDF, as I talked about, it has the ability to trace and smooth. So if you do this, it'll go ahead and take out that shading for you, try to eliminate and try to make it as clean as possible for you. You can do PDF compact, which is what we said is default as, because as we know, email servers, your SMDP server only allows you to send, uh, I, I'm not 100% sure what the states is, um, but th um, the vast majority of email servers allow you to send between 15 megabytes and 25 megabytes of information. So if we're sending full color jobs, you know, at 600 by 600 DPI, you know, or even 300 by 300 DPI, that's a, can, can get to adding up to a lot of data and it'll actually reject those. So we set everything PDF compact because we can take those down, take out some of the layers and allow it to go through. So that's what we usually recommend doing is setting it to PDF compact. You can do PDF A, which is very, very handy. You can actually even select the different types in PDF A um, to actually show and do uh, for like your legal documents and those types of different things. It does have OCR, which is searchable PDF that comes standard on the device. So OCR is very handy if you're not familiar with the searchable PDF. If you take a very large document and you stick it into the document feeder and scan it in, and then you go back to your computer and you want to look for a specific word um, or words, you can actually type it in and it will um, go through that PDF and it will highlight all of those words. That's done because of the dictionary that Canon automatically builds into their device. So that dictionary will go through and highlight everything. And you can, hide, you can prioritize based by on speed or you can do it on precision. If you speak any other languages, you can also pick those. I don't speak any. We'll stick with that one. That's better for me. All right, <laughs> the other thing that we can do, let's go ahead and we'll just show you some other features in here that I, I think are handy is the encrypted PDFs, which is a great little tool. Um, you can go in and encrypt PDF and have them have passwords or pin codes to open up the documents that you send to them. Just another added level of security to make sure that you are sending the document to the right person. As well as, you can actually add digital signatures on the device as well. So if you need to sign something, you can do that from here and pull that file in of your signature. Okay. Uh, inside of scanning, you do have the options inside of here to go through and in different size originals, those kinds of things. But one thing we, we were discussing with some people this morning is naming the file before they send it to them. That is a feature that's right here, so you can actually name it before it comes to you. You can even add a subject in a message, or if you want to, if you send documents from the device to other people in your department or other people in the state, and you want them to be able to reply to you, if you go ahead and you hit this reply to, you can actually select your email address inside of the, inside of the address book, hit okay, and then it will go ahead and now if they click reply, it will reply to your email address. Another feature that we do like as well is we can scan blank originals, or skip blank originals. No, there's no need to scan blanks, but we're gonna skip those blank originals Right here, you have all colors, and then you can also do white ones, just like we talked about with copying. The only advantage of this is nobody likes PDFs with blank pages. So you can go ahead and you can remove those um, blank pages out of there in the same kind of method you would as we showed in the copy feature. Okay, we go ahead and close it up. You can do um, copy to NBCC, so you can blind copy people on as well. Uh, they do have new destination, which Canon did add a new feature with the DX model is you can type in somebody's email address, address. And we're just gonna, this isn't a real one obviously, but we'll go ahead and we'll hit that. And we can actually say next destination, add another new destination, or we can register to address book and now keep it in the address book. Okay. Go ahead and okay. And now we're gonna be sending to that person. Okay, all right. That is a scan and send feature. Remember the home button takes us right back to the beginning. The device does have a walk-up sensor. So anytime the device, we always tell people, hey, don't turn the device off because once the device goes into sleep mode, it will actually use significantly less, um, uh, significantly less energy when it goes into sleep mode. They compare it to like a microwave when it's just sitting there. Again, part of their green initiative. 
The thing is, so when you walk up, it's going to bing and wake up for you right there. Okay. The device itself works just like an iPad, just like a touch screen. You can customize this in any hundred different kinds of ways that you want. You can have up to six images or six applications on one page and then just swipe to the next ones. The reason why that's handy is because if we have jobs that we do every day, I'd say I'm doing the same job, I'm making 25 copies, I'm stapling, I'm duplexing, I can actually make that its very own icon. So when I come up to the device, my job will be right here. I put my documents into the document feeder, I hit my button, it scans them, it'll do the entire job for me in just one button push, which is a very handy tool um, that we find a lot, that a lot of people actually uh, love to do. And we, we help customize those, we'll help give you the training on how to do that. So what we recommend is uh, subscribe to this channel and because we're gonna have, we have how-tos, we're building how-tos on how to do things. And that's gonna be one of them, is how to create a quick menu button so that you can just come here, reference it, or um, you can even call us and do that. So those are little things that we love to do. As I mentioned before about Canon and its security, uh, Canon takes their security very seriously. They have actually put on every single device that they now sell, it comes equipped, uh, standard equipped with antivirus, anti-malware from McAfee. So it is enabled on the device. So if there's any intrusions, if there's anything like that, any time that your device, if it ever gets hacked or if anything changes on its operating system, will literally shut down. So it cannot be a point of um, access to your network, access to your system, because when it shuts down, even if you turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, it does, won't work. Our technicians actually have to come out and reinstall all of the software, all of the, the initial operating systems on your device to help protect. Again, this is all in an effort to help protect uh, you and your environment. The other thing that it comes standard equipped with is um, a hard drive encryption of up to nine times, which I believe is uh, concurrent with the CIA standard as well. So those are all things that come equipped standard on the device, which are all features that I really appreciate and I really like as far as um, information and security goes. So where we are is that's the device. Those are the different features. They're customizable in so many different ways. So if you're going through the products and you look and you see, well, I don't know what this one does or does this fit my office, call us, email us at uh, wyomingcontracts.com and we'll help you get those uh, settings and everything configured so that you can um, have the device that's best gonna fit you. One thing that we do recommend if you do have questions or if you're going from Xerox to Canon or Curacera to Canon um, or any device in general, just we ask that uh, to help us out, to help you out so we don't have to say, hey, do you know what you have on this or this, that? Go ahead, just snap a picture of your device and then include that in your email because our guys are good enough that they can look at it and say, oh, they have this many drawers, they have a booklet finisher, uh, they have a paper deck, they have this document feeder, uh, they have this and this and this. So it just kind of saves us time and saves you the headache of trying to uh, figure out exactly what pieces they call it or what pieces do what. Um, so we can always decipher from those. So don't, don't hesitate to include those. Uh, but that is definitely our, our product, uh, the Canon product, the uh, hardware of the device. So I think we'll go in and we'll start asking some, answering some questions that we have. Um, the first one is, as an employee with ETS, we deploy these on Windows based print servers. How well do the drivers work in a print server environment? Well, I personally manage the print servers here um, and for the other accounts where we do that. And I can tell you right now, Canon's fantastic about that. They have one well, I should say one, they have two printers or two generic drivers for their entire fleet. Canon operates on a, um, a unified uh, firmware platform. So everything's the same across the board. If, if they run out a new firmware, it goes to every device. It goes out, they push it, and it is um, synced across the board. So they have one driver. They have true Adobe PostScript as an option. They also have um, PCL6 as an option as well. And then they also have their generic driver. Um, but I personally, I recommend in a business setting, I always recommend the PCL6 driver. It's universal, so you only have to maintain or have that one downloaded. 
and then obviously you just have to attach the devices to that one driver. Uh, also, the next question is, also we use scan to network folder for many agencies. Are the scanning settings fairly easy to configure using a web interface? Oh, yes, uh, very, very easy. Um, all you need to do is actually to access the web interface is by using the IP address. Once you're at that, uh, the remote user interface, it is just simply address book, add new address, and we can make a how-to video on this, by the way. I think that'd be handy, but yeah, just address book, um, and then you select which one you want, host name, file path, and then obviously password for security, click OK, and it's configured. Um, Next question is, on the mixed size scanning, how many sizes will it scan? One, two, or three? Uh, yes, it can do the same width, or is that part of the question? Oh yeah, uh, let's see, uh, da, da, da. okay. Sorry, it's kind of like at the next page there. So it says, uh, it can do same width or different width um, scanning. The, you can scan up to, so if it's same, same width, you can do that. So you'd be looking at if it's 8.5 by 11, you can scan 11 by 17 with it. If it's 8.5 by 14, you can also do uh, letter R, which is also 8.5 by 11, turn that way. So that is, that is the, the difference. Dif difference. Okay. Uh, what are the DPI options? Yes. So it has different DPI options. Obviously, I don't know if you're referring to printing or scanning. Um, but in scanning, you have up to 600 by 600 DPI is the options that you have there. But for color quality, it can do all the way up to 2400 by 2400 in DPI uh, for printing. I believe it comes set at uh, 1200 by 1200 for printing. But yeah, you can do enhanced by 24 by 2400. So, okay, it looks like that is all of the questions that we do have on there. Is that right? Okay. Awesome, so that's all the questions. One thing that I do wanna point out, and another reason why I told you we talk about this a little bit is um, why you should subscribe to this channel, why we need to do those things, because we're gonna show you how to's, because we want you to call us with service questions and we want you to be able to get a hold of us. Uh, we are, we're offering remote assistance on service calls, so if you have setting issues, if you have those kinds of things, we can get to you a lot faster um, from our technicians here that that's their job is to do remote calls. Um, we also want to be able to show you and, and have you be able to put um, service tickets online through our online website. We have a, a whole portion on there dedicated uh, to you uh, putting service calls in on that way, as well as we have a live chat feature on our website. So if you have quick questions or you say, hey, somebody needs to contact me and do this, those are things that we can do and can get you access to or show you how. And those will be up here on our website for you to be able to see and do. Okay. So definitely, I, I highly recommend the Canon product for you and your decision making um, based on security um, and uh, any other qu color quality. Okay. Anything else that we need to cover? Any other questions? All righty. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and coming out here and uh, seeing us here. We apologize too for not being able to do in-person product shows. It's kind of an interesting time trying to keep that social distancing, um, you know, that six feet of distance between everybody and still get everybody in front of the device to see it. So if you want to, I can't remember if Reese mentioned our different service centers that we do have. They're all located on our website. You can actually go there and see them, see the, the updated locations on where they are. So please, please come, uh, give us a call. Let us know that you'd like to actually see the product in place in first hand and we can get that scheduled and get that set up for you. Um, we just try to keep that social distancing um, barrier for that. Okay. All right. So thank you so much.